Zelda music is important. With a Lionel's share of iconic game melodies, Zelda soundtracks are hugely popular and deeply cherished by fans. Music often plays a role in the game's stories too, and there's even a worldwide concert tour dedicated to the series. Whenever a new Zelda game is released, there is an extraordinary expectation from fans for its music to be of a certain caliber and sound a particular way. Epic and heroic, with rich, memorable melodies full of adventurous spirit. So with 2017's Breath of the Wild promising a new way to experience Zelda, and trailers boasting an exciting new score, Needless to say, the hype was high. While the game received no shortage of praise, opinions on the soundtrack were a bit more divided. Breath of the Wild's music wasn't the bombastic, adventurous score that we expected. Instead, it was gentle and quiet, at times even silent. Many fans were disappointed, feeling it wasn't true to the established Zelda sound or spirit. I personally love Breath of the Wild's soundtrack, and think it has lots of wonderful melodic gems hidden within it. But that's beside the point, because the role of a soundtrack is to score the emotion on the screen. If it has a nice, memorable melody, then that's just a bonus. I don't think Nintendo made the wrong decision with Breath of the Wild's music, because it perfectly captures the emotion of the game. And further than that, I don't even think it sounds out of place within the series. I'd argue that even more famous than Zelda's sense of adventure is its wildly divergent tone. Music is so vital to the series, because most new Zelda games introduce a new version of Hyrule with its own history and character and the role of the music is to establish the unique mood of this world. So while Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time may be heroic and adventurous, Twilight Princess and Majora's Mask are much more dark, mysterious, and dreadful. Then there's Wind Waker's swashbuckling score, and the sweeping orchestral romance of Skyward Sword. These distinct musical approaches all help to cast their respective game's world and characters in entirely different lights. Compare this to one of Zelda's closest relatives, Metroid, which has had creepy, atmospheric music from the very start, and has barely strayed from that style in the 30 years since. At least, successfully. It shouldn't be surprising then that Breath of the Wild sounds different to previous entries in the Zelda series. It may not be adventurous or even dark and dangerous, but the music works just as well in establishing its unique setting. Most Zelda games will open with a relatively peaceful Hyrule being thrown into imminent peril thanks to the rise of an evil power. It's up to Link to prevent this from happening and keep Hyrule safe. However, in Breath of the Wild, the battle's already been fought. Ganon won and took over Hyrule, Link fell into a deep sleep, and it's been this way for a hundred years. It's a post-apocalyptic Hyrule, a broken shadow of its former self. This is immediately made clear, as the first thing Link sees upon waking up and leaving his tomb is the dilapidated ruins of the Temple of Time. Still standing, but badly damaged. As you approach the destroyed building, you'll occasionally hear this fragile piano separated by seconds of just silence. It might not be immediately obvious, but this is actually the Song of Time from Ocarina, just stripped to the bone and played very slowly and loosely.
It's almost like half the notes have been pulled out of the music, and we're just left with this skeleton of the Temple of Time. The same is true for the Hyrule Field theme. It feels like the bones of something greater, the damaged remnants of a once marvellous civilization. Combining the fragile piano with electronic fragments in tracks like Sheikah Tower highlights the ruins of this ancient but technologically advanced world. The music taps into this broken version of Hyrule that you're exploring by almost sounding broken itself. A lot of the time though, you won't even hear any music at all, just the sound of the wilderness. Breath of the Wild embraces the quiet, because silence is just as important as sound. Any intro to music class will teach about John Cage's 433, a piece of music that is four and a half minutes of rests. In other words, pure silence. 433 is a bit of a cheeky way of saying that music isn't just instruments playing notes and chords. It can be any noise you want it to be even the quiet stillness of your environment, if you were to just listen to it. The silence of Breath of the Wild not only lends itself to the game's emotional tone, but serves functional purposes as well. For one, it prevents the themes from getting repetitive and annoying across the dozens of hours you'll spend traversing Hyrule's landscape. It also allows the music to better elevate dramatic moments important to the story, such as Link's memories revealed along the way, or the Divine Beast dungeons. Sometimes though, these moments are much more subtle. Storms are awful. You can't climb, you can't see, you can't build a fire so no resting or cooking food, you risk being struck by lightning, and you can't use any metal items. Worst of all, Unless you're in a specific area, no music plays during a storm. But when the sun finally breaks through the clouds and the storm subsides, the music will fade in to signal the return of safety. Other times, the music will start playing for no apparent reason at all, scoring a nothing moment like chopping down a tree or scaling a cliff face. To me, this kind of harkens back to those bigger moments, turning something menial into something meaningful. It's a reminder that everything you do is important, and working towards your greater goal of defeating Ganon and restoring Hyrule to its former glory. Silence also enables the music to pull you closer to the world, making it feel smaller. Cass might be a single bird, but you can hear his accordion in the area around him, drawing you towards him. It's the same with the stables and villages peppered throughout the map. The slow fade in of the music guides you to them. Battles too, though this does sometimes have the opposite effect. This gentle tugging of the ear can also be felt in the music's recording. Following the precedent set with Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild's soundtrack is full of real, live recorded instruments, adding a nice physicality to the score. There's a strong emphasis on solo performances, creating an air of intimacy. And the timbre of some of these instruments, such as the shakuhachi in the Kakariko village theme, have a real airy and organic texture. If you listen carefully, you can sometimes even hear the performer breathing. (laughs) 
this pulls you closer to the music itself, tuning your ear to its intricacies. It's little touches like these that give Breath of the Wild score its intimate feeling. All of this lends itself to an overarching feeling of sorrow. The contemplative space found within the silence. The intimate and tender instrument solos. The damaged piano tracks, an instrument which to me feels very introspective and melancholic. These three feelings, brokenness, intimacy, and sorrow. When combined, they result in burden. When you are deeply upset about something that is wrong, you feel a personal weight of responsibility to make it right. This is presumably the burden that Link feels. 100 years ago, he was Princess Zelda's knight in the fight against Ganon, and he failed. While many of Hyrule's citizens are optimistic about Link's return, others are angry and still blame him for what happened. I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that our silent protagonist probably blames himself too, and feels a little ashamed. We do see this much more clearly in Zelda. It wasn't so much Link's responsibility to protect Hyrule, as much as it was the princess's. She was born with the burden of Hyrule placed on her shoulders, and dedicates her whole life trying to live up to this duty, but is unable to achieve what is required of her. Zelda is haunted by her past failures, and resents her perceived inability to protect Hyrule. To me, Breath of the Wild isn't a game about having lofty adventures through a fantastic world. Link isn't Bilbo Baggins leaving the Shire for the sake of the adventure, and Zelda isn't a kidnapped princess in need of rescue. It's a more personal tale of redemption for Zelda, Link, and Hyrule, steeped in brokenness and failure, but with just a touch of hope. The music perfectly captures this emotional core of the game, in a way that catchy earworms and rousing heroic fanfares just can't do. Thank you to my Patreon family for actually making this video possible. With their support, I was able to purchase a game capture card and make this video that I've wanted to for months. I am so incredibly grateful for the kindness that is extended to me. It means so much. Super special thanks to my top tier supporters. Chris Chapman, Mike TK, Nanalu, David Sternberg, Gregor Wolf, Yedrick Walinski, Phantom MIG, Neil, Biffboff, Kevin Ramp, Furtherproof, Luigi Piccoli, Freddie Garcia, Jared Williams, Darby Bodie, Tabitha, Emma Smith, and Jordan Hoxie.